Good morning. How is everybody's evening? I think we had a good cameo class last night. So that was night. Yeah, Miss Kathy, I didn't win the lottery. Well, I assume I didn't win the lottery. There was one winner, but I hadn't, um, dad hadn't, text, hadn't checked the lottery tickets, but I'm pretty sure that I don't have that good of luck. So yes, we are, we're here this morning. You're safe, material girls will remain open and functioning. <laughs> oh, yes, only dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. It would be so nice. I'd be able to retire and spend some time sewing, using all these toys that I teach you to their fullest potential. Fullest potential. One day, one day. <clears throat> all right, good morning. Welcome everybody. Just a reminder, we are open from 9.30 to three today. If you should need anything, online store is open 24 seven. Placed an order last night for pickup. It's now ready for pickup. And if you placed an order last night for shipping, it will be going to the post office this afternoon before they close today. I've been snoozing all morning. All right, let's get started. Let's learn about Bob and work. Okay, so we're gonna skip that one. So Bob and work is basically the technique of putting in yarns, ribbons, um, things, uh, threads that are too thick to go through the eye of a sewing machine needle. Okay, and so we would take that thread and we put it in the bobbin, okay? Because, you know, in the bobbin, we're, we're not as limited to um, size or thickness like we are through the eye of a needle, okay? There are some alterations that we need to make in terms of tension and things along the lines, but we will talk about it. It's purely decorative, embellishment-wise, um, that is done with bobbin work, <clears throat> okay? So what do we do with all those beautiful threads, ribbons, cords that are too thick to fit to the eye of the machine? We turn everything upside down. Okay. We're gonna wind decorative thread onto a bobbin, okay? And you're going to sew from the wrong side of the fabric, okay? The top thread that you have threaded in the machine will stitch and grab a hold of the thicker oversized thread, okay, that's in the bobbin and put it to the right side of your fabric, which is currently facing the bobbin area, okay? This um, technique can be used with virtually any kind of stitching, okay, that your sewing machine can do. Straight, zigzag, decorative, free motion, and even machine embroidery. Okay, it does take some alteration to tension um, and to settings on your machine and things along that line. So it's not just pop it all in and go. There is some testing that needs to be done um, with the machine and the stitch to make sure you have the right stitch um, for this project. Okay, and the right technique and things along that line. So we're going to cover all of that. First up is what thread, okay? It's pretty much any thread that you can't get through the eye of a needle, okay? Could be yarn, 
uh, pearl cotton, could be floss, um, thick, a lot of stuff that you would see um, for serger applications because typically these would be threads that we would use in the loopers of a serger. And so uh, specifically brand name wise, you have Pearl Crown Rayon, uh, regular Pearl Cotton that you would be hand embroidering with, uh, crochet cotton, which is what Cordonet is, uh, Superior's Razzle Dazzle and Wonderfill, which is another um, a Canadian brand of um, thread that has a lot of really thick embellishment threads, uh, a lot of Sue Spargo's, Eleganza and things along that lines that you can't get through the eye of a machine needle, okay? You also wanna look at yarn and fibers that are smooth. You don't want anything that's extra bumpy and lumpy, okay? Because you want it, this needs to be able to pass through the bobbin case of your machine smoothly, okay? And so you just want to, you know, you have to play and test with what you've got. Sometimes it's gonna work and sometimes it may not work. Okay, all right, so let's look at, let's look at some threads here. Okay, so I pulled out my box of threads. Okay, so this here is a um, ribbon. Let me see if I can get it open. It's a flat ribbon, okay that could easily be used. It's not overly wide, would still fit wound on a bobbin, okay? Um, the same for, this is silk ribbon, okay? And this is four millimeter silk ribbon. So it is, um, let's see if I can get it open, okay? So again, thin enough that it could be wound onto a bobbin, okay? Then you look at things like pearl cotton, okay? So these are all different sizes of pearl cotton that we would normally um, hand sew with. So you've got, this is size eight, this is size 16, um, that type of thing that you could use in bobbin work. This is um, Eleganza by uh, Sue Spargo, if you can see. So it's size eight, so it's very much like um, size eight pearl cotton. I don't know if it's hard to see there, but it is thick. Definitely not something you're gonna wanna put through the eye of a needle. Um, this is embellishment yarn from YLI. It is almost like, it's pretty thick. Okay, in terms of what you can use and pop in your bobbin. You can also add metallic. So this is Razzle Dazzle. Okay, so Razzle Dazzle is a metallic yarn, okay, from Superior Thread that works really well in, um, it's designed specifically for um, bobbin work, couching, and for sergers. So that works well. This one's another. Um, this is, let's see, this is another Sue Spargo and Wonderfill um, metallic. So there's lots. I have some, <clears throat> I don't even know, know if they make Oliver Twist anymore. Oliver Twist is a hand dyed thread from, from England. It is um, 16 weight. Okay, so again, really too thick to go through the eye of the needle. Um, well, it would go through the eye of a needle, but it's going to be a really big needle and it's probably going to poke too big of a hole. So it's going to look better if you do it upside down um, on the machine. So lots of Oliver Twist. And I'm not sure if it's still made. I don't, there's not a place, at least in the United States that I can, we can get it anymore. We used to carry it back in the day. So that's just a little bit of, you know, wandering through your thread boxes and things along that lines, especially if you have a serger. For those of you that have sergers, um, you may have some threads, um, designer six, Pro Crown Rayon, um, that type of thing, designer seven, that you would have gotten to do um, roll hems with and uh, things along that lines that will work 
a well in um, bobbin work. Get my words here. So how do we wind a bobbin with this thicker thread? Well, you wind the bobbin just like you were gonna wind a bobbin of regular machine thread, okay? Except you wanna make sure you go slow. So you're gonna wind a bobbin at slower thread, at slower speed, okay? And you wanna make sure that it does wind evenly because as it goes around that upper tension disc can come over, because of it being thicker, it can have a tendency to wanna to wind to one side of the bobbin versus you know, moving back and forth. So you can just use your finger to kind of carefully just tap it and so that the bobbin thread, will, the thread will wind um, evenly on the bobbin. If you're talking about like this flat, this flat yarn or the silk ribbon that's not really on a spool that you can um, pre-wind, you can wind by machine, you're gonna wind by hand, okay? And so you're gonna take this thread and you're literally gonna start wrapping it around the bobbin, making sure that it stays flat um, and you, haven't, you aren't pulling too tight, okay? And that will help um, as well. Don't wind your bobbins completely full, maybe about three quarters of the way, okay? And stop the bobbin. So don't, don't let it get all the way up to the point where the machine um, kicks off because you don't want to overfill it. Now, and in the top of the machine, um, so that's going to go in your bobbin, your, thunk, your chunky, thicker thread. In the top of the machine, you're going to want to use a thread that is going to match coordinate, blend well with the yarn that you're using in the bobbin. Typically, I, I stick with between 40 and 50 weight thread, okay? Cotton is normally what I grab. You can also use polyester. So for those that have embroidery thread, isocord, things along that lines, you can use those as well, okay? Um, you can also use invisible thread. I'm not, I, I'm it's a love-hate relationship with invisible thread, but it, to me, I'm already having to deal with getting my bobbin tension appropriate for the thread that I have in the bobbin and how it works with the top. I also, for me, I just don't also need to add another thread that I need to, that can be finicky in the overall scheme of things. So usually I will match my upper thread to the color of the yarn or fiber that I have in my bobbin. But if you want clear or invisible or smoke colored, give it a try. If you can't get the machine to set right, then you know that it's time to um, change to something that maybe coordinates better. The next thing to, to look at is what kind of bobbin and bobbin case does your machine have? Okay. And so we see here on the screen are all the options for Bernina slash Burnett bobbins um, and bobbin cases, as well as um, other brands that have drop-in bobbins. You, are, it's the same style of drop-in bobbin case. So starting on the, the left-hand side, we have the CB hook and then you have a rotary hook. So the CB hook are machines that are five and a half millimeters in width for our older style machines. And I, I say older, but I'm not talking like 50 years older, but anything that uses that style of bobbin case um, is five and a half. My rotary hook machines are going to be nine millimeters in stitch width. So you're looking at the 185, the 200, 730, 640s, uh, things along that lines have that style of case. It's missing the little um, finger from the top. Then we have what we call the B9 hook. Okay. And the B9 bobbin, which is the um, larger plastic, uh, uh, hard plastic case that is in our current line of machines. So the current four series, so 435, 475, 480, the new generation <clears throat> 535, five, new generation 570 and 590, and then this all the sevens and um, machines use that particular style of bobbin. Drop-in bobbin cases, you're gonna find in um, the Burnett's, the Everstones, the BO5 Academy, um, all of those have that style of bobbin case, as well as uh, most other brands, Brother, Baby Lock, um, 
that type of thing. The majority of everybody else is, is dropping bobbins. And then the very last one is my eight series hook. So my 820, my 830s, and my um, 880s have this particular series of hook. And then with that being said, we need to find the right bobbin case. Because we need to reduce the amount of tension that is on the bobbin with this thicker thread, we need to know and we need to reduce the tension on the bobbin case. Now, we all, everybody may make uh, special bobbin cases for bobbin work for their machines, okay? They're not the same as a sewing machine bobbin case. And we never want to adjust the tension on a sewing machine bobbin case, okay? Never. Um, usually these bobbin cases are a different color, okay? They have some sort of notification or some sort of indicator that it's not your regular case. They typically have a longer screw that's there to help adjust the tension setting for thread thickness. And like I said, it's not recommended that you adjust the tension on your bobbin case that came with your machine for the purpose of sewing correctly. Leave it alone don't touch. Because if you start adjusting your regular sewing bobbin case, oh, I know exactly where that screw is at. You know, it, it was right at two o'clock. And trust me, it won't be the same when you go to try to put it back where it belongs. So if you have a drop-in bobbin system, you're going to want, you're going to need to purchase a second bobbin case. Okay. CB hook machines. You're going to want to purchase a second bobbin case. Um, the Berninas have, um, the, for the CB bobbins, we do have a black latch bobbin case and literally the latch on the front of it is black so that you have um, a little bit more of an indicator as to uh, what it looks like. If you have just a second regular hook, a regular latch bobbin case, it, the black doesn't do anything. It just means that it's an indicator for you. You can, I would suggest, if you have to purchase a second bobbin case and it is not color coded, that you take some nail polish or something, um, some paint or something and paint something so that you know that that's the one that you're allowed to play with this group. Those of you with the B9 hook uh, bobbin case, so that's my four or five, seven series machines in today's uh, world, um, you can purchase a red bobbin case okay so red bobbin case means no tension on it okay and then my eight series systems you have a special threading process and tension adjustments that we can do to help um, adjust your bobbin tension okay and i'll show you that here in a moment so just as a visual um, on the right here that's a regular cb bobbin case and on to the right of that is the black latch, okay? It's got a black latch on it. And then on the left image, you have a standard uh, bobbin case for the B9 hook, and then you have the red bobbin case for the B9. And you can see that the screws are missing from the red one because we don't want any particular tension on that particular, on that particular hook, okay? So let me um, show you here, okay? just what they kind of look like in person and how to adjust tension on a bobbin case. Okay. So if you do have a uh, black latch or a rotary hook machine or even a drop-in bobbin, okay, it, we need to reduce the tension on that particular um, case. So on the side of the case, there are um, screws, okay, little tiny screws. There's typically, the CB has, a, has two screws. You want the one that is the larger of the two, okay? The smaller screw on this is actually holding the spring on the machine. The larger screw is the screw that adjusts how tight or loose that spring is. My suggestion is, is that you start loosening and this screw, if you put this bobbin in a baggie and then put your hands in the baggie, um, you know, in the baggie and try to adjust it, what's gonna, it's gonna be helpful because if you go too loose, 
this spring is going to go pop and that little tiny screw is going to go flying across the room. Okay, so if you took, let's see, if you took this bobbin case, man, I cannot open baggies today. If you took the bobbin case and put inside of a baggie and then worked from inside of the baggie, this is going to help keep that screw from frying across the room if you were to loosen it too loose. Okay, loose enough that the spring goes flying. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Okay, so you turn the screw to the left, it's gonna loosen it up. You turn the screw to the right, it's gonna tighten it down. The red bobbin case, you can see there's no tension spring, no screw. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. And that's the way it is um, designed to be. My eight series machines to adjust the tension, <coughs> excuse me, to adjust the tension on your bobbin case in your machine, you have a tool called a multifunction tool that came with the machine. Okay. And I say they're the 880, but this applies also to the 830 and the 820. Okay. And right in the top of your, um, your bobbin area where your hook and bobbin goes in, there is a um, screw, okay? And the top of that screw, okay, is what we adjust. Okay, so I'll show you. So we all are probably familiar with this tool if you have an eight series machine. Most of you use this end to remove the little service door at the top. But this end is what we use to take needles in and out of the machine with. But this end right here is the end that we would use to loosen this screw. So I'm gonna put my hand underneath and I'm gonna turn the hand wheel towards me so that I can see that little screw. The white dot that's in front of it is showing you kind of center, okay? And then we can place this little guy on top of that screw and slide it left or right. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. You, when you're done doing bobbin work, you can bring it back to where it belongs for your machine. And typically on the door of the machine, there is a um, sticker that has a red dot on it. And that is showing you the position that this screw should be in um, in relation to if you lined it up with center, if the dot was one to the right or one to the left, that is your standard tension on your the way that your bobbin is set for your machine. They don't all always come back to center, okay? So that is how my eight series machines would also um, adjust tension. Now, if you've gone all the way um, on this machine to the left and you still need to adjust tension, there is a way to bypass tension altogether. And that is going to be, um, if you look in the bottom here, there's a hole, okay? And with your machine, you should have gotten, well, I know you did. Now, whether you still have it or not, because it is a little tiny, basically uh, metal wire, you would basically thread down through that hole and pull the thread out through. That completely bypasses the tension of the bobbin case. Okay. So just so you can see here. Okay. And so that's, you're definitely going to want to use that for things like the flat ribbons and the yarns that you want to try to keep flat and putting it into those tension areas um, are going to, you know, force it to fold or have to be smaller. So you can bypass the um, tension altogether on the eight series machines. Okay. So what do we need to do to prepare our machine? Well, one, once you get your thread in the bobbin, 
Okay, you're going to um, turn the hand wheel and pull the fibers or the bobbin thread to the top and you're going to give yourself about a good six to seven inch long tail. Okay, so we need a tail at the beginning. We're going to sew slow, which means we're going to reduce the speed of our machines. Okay. I typically use a number 20 foot, an open toe kind of embroidery foot so that you can see where you're stitching. Okay, um, kind of gives you a better idea. And we're going to turn off any automatic securing. Okay, so we don't want the machine to tie any knots. Okay, when you're doing bobbin work, you're going to want to pull the thread to the wrong side of the fabric and tie a knot. You're not going to want the machine to automatically tie knots because remember, your thread, you are currently sewing on the right side of the fabric towards the bobbin. So if you tied a knot, the knot is going to be on the front side or the good side. So we don't want the machine to do any knot tying. Now this only typically applies, um, the, the automatic securing stitches in the world of Bernina is going to apply to our um, bigger machines. Uh, I'm gonna show you here how to turn that off. And when I say bigger machines, uh, any of my four, five, and seven, and eight series machines uh, have this automatic securing function. It started with the 830 uh, about 12, 13 years ago. So the if you go into personal setup, so that's the gears on your machine, and you go into sewing settings, uh, immediately you should see the icon here that has a needle with a knot underneath of it. And that is your automatic securing at the start of a stitch, which means the machine is going to stitch in place and then start sewing. You want to turn that off. So you're going to touch the button so that you have the red circle, which means turned off. Okay. You also want to make sure that when you're using bobbin work or doing bobbin work, you don't use scissors. Okay. So no using your scissors to cut thread. There's no back stitching, nothing. Okay, because you're going to sew, you're going to sew to the end of where you want to stop, you're going to pull your fabric out, leave yourself a, a long tail. Okay. To prepare your fabric, you're going to probably want to use um, some sort of stabilizer, a lightweight tear away, ultra clean and tear, something just because you are sewing a decorative stitch, plus you're sewing a decorative stitch with thicker thread. So to help prevent puckering or gathering in that world, you're gonna want to put some sort of stabilizer or start your fabric, use some best press, some material magic, something to give that fabric a little bit of body and to help try to keep it from wanting to draw in and pucker. You may also want to draw on the wrong side of the fabric or the wrong side of the stabilizer, the lines that you wanna do. Okay, because you're not going to be able to use those lines that could be marked on the front of the fabric because remember the front of the fabric is now going to be facing down towards your bobbin area. Okay. Let's choose the right stitch. Okay, the right stitch are going to be simple practical decorative stitches with what we call low density. Okay, no satin stitch decorative stitches. Um, you want to look for stitches that don't are wide open, don't go back and forth over themselves um, very much, um, that aren't too close together. Because remember, you've got a thicker cord. And so that thicker cord is going to fill a larger space. So if a stitch is very close together, when you sew it, it may not look like that stitch because the cord is so thick. You may also uh, desire to increase the stitch width and length to help offset that fabric thickness, um, uh, not fabric, fiber thickness of what you have in your bobbin area, okay? Typically starting at four millimeters and going up or down from there, it's kind of um, a middle of the road option. So these are just some stitches that, you know, are, are open and could look nice with bobbin work. So here you go. Here's some options showing you um, what they'll look like. This was sewn from the wrong side. 
And using the seams and where these fabrics were joined together is what we used to um, follow so that we could stay over top of the seam. So you can see kind of just an idea. Uh, this is uh, Pearl Crown Rayon um, at number 601. Uh, 698 looks like Razzle Dazzle. Uh, 603, the one in the middle, is probably a flat cord, a flat ribbon of some sort. The 672 and the 3, 1332 are probably also uh, Pearl Crown Rayon um, type thickness, okay? So it can really give a beautiful embellishment, very popular um, in crazy quilting and things along that lines uh, for covering up those seams and embellishing those seams without having to do the work by hand. So as with anything, we test, 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 okay? Test and adjust. And you're going to be adjusting top tension, okay? So you're going to adjust your top tension um, the bobbin should be laying against the fabric, but not squeezing it or drooping, okay? So you want it, that top thread to pull the bobbin, your fiber thread up and secure it, but not be too tight or too loose, okay? And it is possible that the top thread could be visible on the wrong side, um, but you can continue finding the right balance, okay? And you will um, be happy. And sometimes, yes, you may have to take the tension on your machine in the upper tension as high as it will go, okay? All the way up to 10, or um, take your bobbin tension and completely bypass it with no tension. So it's not wrong if you have to do that, okay? And a reminder that not all stitches are gonna look good in the um, bobbin work process. So you may want to just keep playing and keep testing. Just as a reminder for those that have um, the computerized machines, your tension uh, looks on this particular screen in the upper left hand corner, we have what looks like a piece of chain link. Okay. And that is your upper tension. And so when you open that, you have the ability to increase and decrease it, okay? The higher the number, the higher the, the top thread is gonna pull against the bobbin, okay? And if you've gone too high and it's pulling too much, then you're gonna wanna decrease your upper tension. Um, for my um, non-computerized machines, uh, in terms of non touchscreen machines. You have a dial right on the top of your machine that um, is numbered from zero to 10 um, that you can move um, as well. So that's your upper tension option on the machine, okay? So once you've done your testing and testing and texti testing, oops, let's come back here my screen to change. Just as a reminder as to how you sew, you're going to place the fabric with stabilizer under the presser foot right side down. Okay. Um, that way you'll be looking at the stabilizer side. Bring your bobbin tail up um, through the top, up to the top and hold on to them. That way you can avoid uh, thread nest and jams at the beginning of a stitch. So if you hold on to your top and bobbin thread, okay, it also will help keep it from getting tangled. And then sew slowly, okay? Um, if you have a hard time sewing slowly, I would um, use your start stop buttons on the machine and move your slide speed controls all the way down. Okay. Once you finish sewing, you're going to remove the fabric from underneath the foot and pull a long thread tail and then use a pair of physical scissors to cut. Do not use the thread cutter on the machines to cut your threads because it's going to one, your thread cutter really probably wasn't designed to cut that thick of a thread. So you could cause a jam in your thread cutter. Two, you're gonna leave too short of a tail because you need to be able to thread your decorative thread tails to the wrong side of the fabric, 
okay? And tie your own manual knot, okay? So large eye needle, large tapestry needle, something that you can easily thread your thread tails through and then go right down where the last stitch was taken and then pull it to the back and then use the upper thread and that to tie a knot to secure your stitch, okay? So that was sewing. You can do the same thing in machine embroidery, okay? One, you need specific designs, okay, that were designed for bobbin work, okay? You want simple straight stitched outlines, uh, no knots or tie offs at the beginning or the end of the design, okay? Um, and, you know, it may take some finding and fiddling with the typically red work designs, um, quilting designs are probably going to be your best option, okay? Or things that are like thread painted in there um, because they're not going to go over top of themselves multiple times so that they build a thread build up. They're designed to be, you know, somewhat continuous. The biggest thing is that the tie on and the tie offs, okay? And depending upon the machine, um, that type of thing. But if you have uh, the Bernina embroidery software, you can turn off the tie on and tie off. So you can open the design that you wanna use in embroidery software and then turn off the tie ons and tie offs. So the machine will not tie any knots anywhere um, on the machine. So that will help keep you know a knot from forming in a particular area. Again, you are going to hoop this wrong side up. So you're going to hoop it so that the stabilizer is on top and your good fabric is facing the bobbin. Okay. And then you're going to run some practice ones because you're, need, you're going to need to set up your tension and your threading and everything so that it works with this particular design. Okay. And like I said, not only sewing and machine embroidery, but you can also do um, stitch regulated or free motion quilting with bobbin work as well. Okay. Um, that's there. Do we have any questions? Now, again, I, these uh, where you see the more information, obviously you can't touch them here, but when I, the presentation has already been um, posted up on to our website and give me a moment and I will um, show you. So I hope that those that had uh, requested me to talk about Bob and work that you found this helpful and maybe a little bit more, um, uh, give you a little bit more confidence to go and give it a try and experiment you ultimately, I mean, you can't really hurt that much, okay, with it. So just play. It really is a lot of fun um, that's there. So just so you can see here. So if you go to our website and across the top, um, if you head over to the YouTube tab, that's across the top over towards the far right side, you will um, be able to arrow down um, to the towards the bottom and these are the three so far this month uh, and if you click on presentation it's going to open the pdf for what we just talked to and talked about and if you go to the very last page these are links and so you can click on them and they will take you to a um, article, that type of thing that has more information, some YouTube videos, um, things along that lines. I will eventually have the link, the video link ready because I will move this to YouTube. So that will um, also, you'll be able to watch it again. Uh, let's see. Good questions, good questions. Um, all right, so higher the number, the thicker the thread. No, it's the other way around. 
the higher the thread weight, the thinner it is. Okay, so a 100 weight thread is super, super fine. And a 12 weight thread is super, super thick. Okay, it is opposite. Um, yes, so the question is, will we need a red bobbin case for embroidery? Yes, you're gonna want, you're gonna need to decrease your bobbin tension. Definitely don't wanna use the gold bobbin case, okay? For my seven, uh, four, five, seven series machines. That gold bobbin case is high tension. So it's got extra tension on it. You definitely don't wanna be using that. You can try it with your standard bobbin case because it, again, it's gonna depend upon how thick the fiber is that you're using. You may find it works fine, but I would definitely, you could give it a try, but you're probably gonna end up needing a red bobbin case um, for my, um, 700s, 500s, uh, 790s for embroidery. Uh, you're going to have to probably decrease that bobbin tension and you don't want to do it um, with the one that you would normally sew with. Now, if you are, you know, if you do have a standard bobbin case and you have a gold bobbin case and you always use the gold bobbin case, you could take your original black bobbin case and you could adjust the screw on it but remember, you don't have a huge ability to decrease that tension a lot because that screw is very short, okay? And so, but it does give you. Yes, so the other question was, um, is this possible in a Q-series? Yes, it is. So my Q-series machines, you have your bobbin cases. Uh, you already adjust the tension on your bobbin cases, okay? You want the thread when you hold when you hold the bobbin, here, let me, let me turn this off for a second. So when you put your bobbin in the bobbin case, you want the thread to pull out smoothly, okay? And so for my Q-series owners, yes, wind your bobbin, put that decorative thread in your bobbin, put it in and um, pull on it, make sure it pulls smoothly and then give it a try. So yes, it is capable of um, pretty much any machine that has a bobbin. Okay, you can do bobbin work in. Um, so yes, you could free motion on a Q-series machine with the um, bobbin work in the bobbin. All right. Um, I had a question about, are there any updates for my machine? And so let me, let me, while I have a few minutes here, let me talk about my Berninas and if you need an update. So the first thing to look at if you're trying to figure out if you need an update is you need to know what current version you're at. Okay. Now, typically when you bring your machine in for service once a year, we will bring your machine up to its current firmware. And so you don't need to do it on your own. Okay. But we would come into personal setup. You would go to the sewing machine option and then you go to information. And then under information, there would be the option of version. And this is going to give you your software versions, okay, that are there. And then, give me one second, let me get somewhere, and then we'll talk about it. So once you determine what version you have, the easiest and quickest way um, is to go to the Bernina website, which let me share... Okay, so I'm going to go to the Bernina website and I'm going to find my machine. Um, I know I was working on the 790, so let's just pull. Nope, not that machine. Maybe I can find it. Okay, so I'm going to go find my machine. And then typically a portion of the way down, you're gonna see like these little tabs and you're gonna to wanna to find the tab that says support and click on that. Okay. And then you will see this option here to jump to the support page. So we click that. And then it's gonna give you, here's the option of where to download the firmware. 
And if this number doesn't match the number that you currently have, then you probably do an update, okay? You can walk through it. The instructions are there. The firmware actual file is there as well as the release notes that tell you what is changing in the update. When you install this firmware release, it will tell you um, what changes they've made. The other thing that's always there too is a um, simulator. And so the simulator is what I use here on screen to show you things. So basically it allows you to use your sewing machines interface on your um, laptop. And that way you can play around with things and touch buttons and design things and without being afraid of breaking your machine. And so um, that, you know, if you want it, we're trying to figure out, you know, how combi mode worked and you, you wanted to do this while you were sitting on the couch or you were on travel, um, you could um, do um, this in a hotel room and just play. Uh, let's see, my 780 can't take a yellow bobbin. That is correct. No yellow bobbin for the 710, 750, and 780. But yes, we do have red bobbin cases for those machines. Okay. So the 780, 750, and 710s, we do have a red bobbin case for that. I don't know if I have one in stock. I don't know if I have them in stock, but they can be ordered. They are available um, for that previous version of the seven series machines. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that everybody found this informational and educational here this morning, and maybe we'll give you a little bit of um, inspiration to try some, some new creativity or something, you know, just add a little bit of bobbin work to, you know, a zipper bag um, and things like that. Yes, the 790s, 740s, 770s, and 790s, I have red and yellow bobbin cases for you, okay? It's only the yellow bobbin case that doesn't exist um, yet uh, for a 710, a 750, and a 780, okay? All right. Well, I hope everybody has a great weekend. Stay warm. It is a little chilly out there. And I do hear, but never truly believe, that there are snowflakes in the forecast for next week. So I would hope, if I can't win the lottery, I hope it lets me hit some snow. I just want a little bit of snow. So <laughs> I wouldn't mind maybe a little day off, but see the thing about snow is that even though we're teaching virtually, you'll still have class, even if it snows outside. So I hope <laughs> my sweater reminds me of Bernie's gloves. Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe when I'm done with it, I will send it to the teacher in Maine and she can make a pair of um, felted uh, gloves, mittens out of my uh, sweater. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend again. Thank you so much uh, for joining uh, joining me this morning. Yeah, maybe we need Bernie at Virtual Breakfast Club. Um, I'll have to see what I can do. Uh, for a 590, you would be using a red bobbin case. I have, um, it'd be the same red bobbin cases that the 790, 770, and 740 use. So we do have those. All right, everybody, thank you so much and have a great rest of your weekend and we hope to see you soon. Bye.